This is a magnetic rotor that's based in part on a flat track magnetic propulsion system designed by YouTube user What If I Did This? The idea behind it is that by placing the magnets on a stator or track using specific spacing that prevents equilibrium or balance and combining that with the mass and inertia in a rotor or wheel that you could achieve continual rotation or forward movement. Before I get to all the details and specifics though, if you haven't subscribed to my backup channel, you can get to it at the URL above. If anything of importance ever disappears off of this platform, look for it there. If you haven't already, visit my other YouTube channel that features interesting topics that wouldn't always fit the subject matter on this one. And for my more controversial videos, visit me at the URL above. With all of the chaos going on in the world today, it would be prudent to get yourself some storable food and provide yourself with a little peace of mind. There's a link to my favorite source of which in the description below. To be honest, when I first saw the video this design is based on, I almost ignored it, as I've tried a lot of very similar configurations through the years. In fact, it doesn't look too dissimilar from the very first configuration I attempted to build of a magnetic track and rotor when I first began exploring the idea of trying to build a magnetic motor using only permanent magnets. I featured pictures of some of my designs and sketch designs of it in different videos over the years. What caught my eye in this particular video is that this YouTuber was using a spacing method in his track similar to Howard Johnson's, and that piqued my curiosity. He also mentioned using inertia and momentum to overcome flux loops or areas of drag or magnetic repulsion in the track. So I ended up listening to his entire video, which was nearly 39 minutes long. And a lot of what he said about how a device like this might work was grounded in logic. The views on this video, as of today, are 471. After being online for a year, I decided that since not many people seem to have taken particular notice or experimented with the design, I'd experiment with it myself. I actually own the exact magnets he used in his design, but decided to go with smaller ones in my configuration to save on material and cost. The spacing he used was basically one half the width of the magnets he used in his track followed by the width of the magnets, and then one and a half the width. This is cycled along the length of the track. In his track, that would be five millimeter to 10, and then 15 millimeters. Placing the magnets symmetrically, he said, would not work. As I said, I've worked on similar tracks with magnets symmetrically placed in the past and confirm that they will not work. I found, however, that by placing spaces between the rows of magnets, you can essentially create multiple tracks within an extended track that all function. The only problem is that you have to overcome the repulsive force of entering each new spacing of magnets on the track. So by eliminating the symmetry and using momentum and inertia, this YouTube user suggests that you could move unimpeded through the track at a constant speed and overcome this. What I found is that you can do just that. And by adding sections, this will continue on and on. So it looks like it works exactly the way he suggests. In fact, he stated that he built a longer version of the track in one of his comments on the video, and that it ran the entire length of his kitchen. I don't doubt that it did just that, as I can verify that you can run one of these discs through several tracks attached together with no noticeable slowing. However, I did notice that if you neglect to start the disc from the edge of the track and instead start somewhere in the middle, the wheel often fails to achieve the momentum and inertia necessary to escape the track, which if you build a rotary version of it, will prevent you from achieving rotation. I've explained in subsequent videos that many of these flat tracks function in a similar fashion to what would happen if you placed a long magnet on each side of a cart or wheel. Once you overcome the opposing force of the magnetic field to enter the track, it works like a slingshot, shooting the object out the other end. By extending the track and attempting to restart the object or cart at various locations in the middle of the track, it's easy to tell if that's what's going on, as it will simply stall somewhere in the middle of the track if that is the case. If that occurs, then you don't actually have an arrangement of magnets in your track 
that you could arc the geometry of to produce rotary motion. I should also point out that the configuration I used for my rotary track, YouTube user what if I did this, mentioned in his video would not work, but I felt like trying it anyway, and I wanted an excuse to build another assembly that I could use to test other rotors and stator configurations. As some of the ones I built in the past I don't feel worked as well as I would have liked for testing different assemblies. The solution he suggested was curving the track rather than turning it sideways. I have built rotor assemblies in the past that were similar to that type of configuration, though smaller in diameter. I found that even adding mass and inertia failed to induce rotation. However, I built them with a certain symmetry and configuration similar to this design, rather than breaking up the spacing which is why I tried this one. I know when you build them symmetrically, the repulsive forces offset the attraction and it simply stalls, which is what happened in this configuration as well. On a side note, it's also better to avoid any metals in these types of systems, as even aluminum can cause eddy currents between the magnets. I went back and forth and avoided metals in some of the versions of the tracks I configured and included brass screws and others. I used aluminum and metal parts on the rotor assembly in areas where the metals were not between the magnets, but would have simply reconfigured it if I saw enough promise in the results that I was getting out of it and determined that the metals could be causing adverse effects that were preventing the assembly to work. I'm not actually out to disprove the claims of this YouTube user. I find his logic to be sound, and I can tell by listening to him that he's a pretty intelligent guy and has spent quite a bit of time experimenting with tracks like these. He also chose to share his design with people to experiment with rather than to seek profit for it. So his heart seems to be in the right place and he's not trying to trick or scam anybody. He's simply sharing information he's learned from experimentation and inspiration. I had a good time working on this project and would probably be willing to work on it some more if he would be willing to produce a new video that demonstrated a longer version of his track. He mentioned in the comment section to his video that he built a track that extended 4 meters or 13 feet. If he could demonstrate that the wheel can be started from various points in the center of the track and still accelerate out the end of the track in either direction, then that would show that it does in fact function the way he believes it does. I would love to prove his concept as that was the point of working on this video in the first place. It's possible that using different size magnets produced a different effect, or that I didn't get the mass correct in the wheel, though I did experiment with several sizes, weights, and magnetic combinations. I also attempted different spacing of the magnets in the track to attempt to break up the symmetry even further. If it's the case that one of these variables I mentioned could be the issue, then that could be confirmed with a video of the original configuration and a demonstration of the disc being started at various placements in the middle of a much longer track and demonstrating the disc can still build up momentum and exit the track no matter where you started at. Whether this YouTube user chooses to do that or not, I'll leave up to him. I know his video deserves more than 471 views though, so feel free to stop by his channel and drop some encouraging words of motivation his way. I'll provide the link to his video in the description below. Thanks for watching, and do great things.